Well, greetings everyone and welcome back to the Base Blaster Audio Tech YouTube channel. And in this video I have something which is horribly outdated. Then that's another IC station video. Yay, they send me more goodies. This video, I actually have two of these. I'll get to that in a minute. Well, first off, this video might look different because I am currently recording it with my phone. Because I do not have my camcorder. So I just grabbed a one of those phone mounts for a tripod and here it is. I don't like it because it sits very high up in the air and I have it zoomed in by 1.2 times. But this does record in 1080p, believe it or not. I probably won't upload that because my internet's too slow. Anywho, what this is today is this is a um, USB powered buck boost converter. Which means you give it a, a voltage input, in this case be 5 volts, then you can boost it up to a voltage. I don't remember what voltage that was. Or you can buck it down to a lower voltage. Now the buck limit seems to be around 1.2 or so, but it's kind of buggy after about 1.6. I'm going to look up the website for this, the product page, using the good old reliable crappy ZTE. Okay, here it is. A little out of focus, so glaring on it. And so this is the page for it. I just see it's the same thing. Let's we'll see if we can find the specs. Alright, input voltage. 3.5 to 12, I didn't even know that, output voltage, 1.2 to 24. Now, now unlike a lot of these buck boost, see most of these buck boost converters, even the cheap ones, are fairly powerful. This one you have to be careful with because it's only capable of 3 watts. Now, um, the reason I have two of these, focus, cell phone, now, the reason I have two of these is they sent me this one mm, probably two or three months ago to do a review on. It came at the same time as that little Bluetooth audio board that I didn't like. This board quit working. I'm not sure, but I think I might have actually exceeded that power rating, powering a DC fan. But as I demonstrate, if I plug it in, our meter hangs on triple eights and then it's dead. You can turn it on if you want. Nothing. Adjust the voltage, nothing. It is completely foobard. Parts unit. So, surprising they would do it for a small channel like mine, send me a new one. Now, this is one of those odd items that I don't actually have many actual uses for. The only thing I can think of is powering this fan when I'm soldering, which does a good job at. This is a one, like a 1 1.2 watt fan. But this is quite a neat board because it is buck and boost. So, um, hmm, I guess let's begin. We have three different ways to actually get power into the unit. We can use our main USB connector and plug it in. Or we could get a micro USB and plug it in like that. Or, I just hit the tripod. Let's we'll, um, we'll see how close up the macro on this phone is. Not too bad. You can see right there in the corners of the board you have solder pads and you can run your bare wire straight onto them. But while we're up close, you do have an on off button which turns the voltage, um, the output on or off. Just your standard screw down terminals for the output. We also have 2.54 millimeter pitch, um, just normal through hole connectors for the output, which I don't understand why there's three. Oh, what's this? Oh, I see. It's another. Vo Whoopsies. It's another voltage input. Huh, so I can actually power the whole thing from that. So I've already concluded I do not care for the phone to video this. But that's pretty much the overview. Like, yeah, your, your two inductors here, but that's with any switch mode supply. I guess now let's plug it in and do a brief demonstration of it. So I got my um, 1.2 watt. 12 volt just standard computer fan screwed into the outputs on this and to use it we're going to use this horrible dollar general power bank that i had to cut half of it off because the ports were misaligned and i was unable to actually plug anything into it and so we turn it on as you can kind of see with shadows we can turn the output on or off See how low can we go? What did it say? 1.2 volts. Now then it kind of jumps back up. 
And there we go. At 3.1 volts, the fan starts. So let's go ahead and crank this up to the 12 volt. This is also a very multi-turn adjustment pot here. Now this fan will run at like 16 volts, but I think at that point it may start to exceed like the 2.4 watts or something at that voltage range. Yeah, input 2 to 20, output power is 3 watts. 20 to 24 is 2.5, but then it's in buck mode. Then 1.2 to 2, 2 watts, so, hmm. Just so the module also works, we'll just get a normal micro USB. And same thing, just a different way of powering it. Now one thing that I want to check is with a lot of these Chinese products that have voltmeters in them, they're often horribly inaccurate. Now this one here, volt and current, does have adjustments for both of them and I got it pretty close. This has no form of adjustment. So we're going to dig out a multimeter and we're going to see how accurate this display is. Because since the power of this unit is so little, the output capability, hopefully the meter is at least reasonably accurate. So it's flicking bet between 11.9 and 12. Let's turn it up. Okay, now we're at 12, 12, 1. We're actually doing about 12.3. And so let's adjust the meter to 12. So now that the meter is perfectly on 12, this board's indicating 11.7. So it's off by a whole 0.3 volts. That could be an issue for some 5 volt electronics. So let's try to get this meter to indicate 5 volts. Shadows are everywhere. 5 volts. Five. Now, now you know this is one of those cheap Harbor Freight meters. It actually has a calibration pot inside. It has been calibrated. It was horribly off when I got it, and now it's actually really close to my Fluke 8050A. Right, so 5.07. Oh, I think I remember what this is. I've seen this before in a voltmeter. I don't think I have it anymore. Yes these little voltmeters they're accurate at a low voltage but their accuracy is non-linear the higher the voltage gets the more off it becomes but if you're under like 10 volts it was bang on let's see if this is that way let's um let's disconnect our fan so we don't risk drawing too much from this let's turn this up to 20 volts or so I'm starting to hear the coil whine 18 and a half, that's a good uneven value. Meter says 18 and a half, the coils are whining away. If I can get my probe here. Meter says 18.9. So yeah, they're a little off. Let's take it all the way to its rated 24 volts. Which I'm not sure what you can run on 24 volts that only takes 3 watts. I'm sure there's something out there. 24. Oh, we're going to the 200 volt range. We are at 24.6. We're over half a volt off. Let's go a little more and see how high this will actually go. 25. 26. I don't know if it'll shut off at over voltage or if the potentiometer eventually hits a limit. That's it. That's its limit. 26, 9, 27. It bounces. What's it going to read? Got my probes backwards. Woo! It's 27, 6. So yeah, this is one of those meters that the higher the voltage level gets, the more off it becomes. The coil line is the loudest around the 22 volt mark. Another neat little feature of this board, which just goes to prove that it, I think there's a microcontroller underneath this LCD, which by the way, this little trick where you shake it and the screen flickers, 
it's multiplexed, which is expected. But I think there's also a micro internet that controls all this. But this little on off, as you see, it just shuts the output off. But the cool thing about this is it has memory. So it's off now if I unplug it. Ah. And I could wait, but I'm not going to. Plug it back in, it'll stay off. Turn it back on, runs fine, fan. All right, kill power, plug it back in. So it has memory, so you don't have to risk you turning it into something and then it blows up whatever you have connected into it. Such as most like Arduino, Arduino circuits, which really don't like any more than like five and a half volts. Now one thing I could do to this that I like to do with IC station products is completely abuse it by putting a DC load on it and an amp meter. However, because this thing is rated for so little power, I don't want to kill another one. Because this thing's actually really useful for powering a fan if I'm soldering something, because usually my main power supply, which is only a one output, is always being used. Now I have a quad output supply, LM317 by 4 but of course, it's not finished like every other project I've started. I was supposed to put this voltmeter in my supply like two years ago. But, link in the description for this board if you want to get one. It is a neat board, I do like it, I just don't have a lot of uses for it. But, that's really all I have to say. It's just a small, simple board, there's not a lot to it. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye for now.